Hello friends, welcome to this week's vlog. I am Noelle and we are this week continuing our pattern test of the Ada gown, which is a 18th century Italian gown, 1775 to 1790 to be specific, for screw patterns and Virgil's fine goods. There is a part one to this thing, vlog, what this pattern test <laughs> that is the last video I released so I will leave a link to it here and down below in the description if you should want to watch that first if not if you've already watched that or you don't care come join me for the rest of this let's discuss where we are all right here is the inside of the dress I have gone ahead and attached the skirt part to the bodice part I have also done a row of like traveling back stitches all along here just about an inch down from where it's attached just to hold like the very top of the pleats perfectly in place forever and ever. So the thing I have to do now is take out the basting that is holding the skirt to the bodice and then go ahead and flip this over, pull this down and iron it down flat and then I'm going to try it on see how it looks. In the last video we decided that this back point was way too high and I think that's going to be the case. But everyone did say that once I release these pleats, which we will do very shortly, it should get better. But also, the this whole back of the bodice seems to be higher than it was in the mock-up. I went back and looked at the mock-up, and it didn't sit as high as this did, which I don't fully understand. But uh, my friend Nicole did say that it possibly has to do with the straps and the strap attachment, so there is a possibility I could make these longer. But I'm going to do the try-on. And I'm going to do a try on after I release the pleats as well, just to see what happens there. And we'll make some judgment calls from there. We also get to have immediate gratification on the task list. We have already attached the skirt to the bodice and we have tacked down the pleats. So let's do a little try on and then we will release the pleats. Okay, I had to slice this down, which was kind of terrifying. <laughs> and then I pressed this all down. And hey look, you can see the lining and the edge right there. So that picture was correct. Um, <laughs> and you can see this pushed up. Uh, this got a little like weird because I essentially have to iron a curve without it being clipped. I mean I could clip it, but just in the event that like something weird is going on here, I'm, I'm not going to. So <laughs> I'm just going to leave it unclipped for now. But I uh, ironed it down. That's what you're supposed to do and it helps go a little oomph to that area so I left it there just letting it cool and then I'm gonna go ahead and release the rest of the pleats so we can have a look at what it looks like when it is released and falling the way it will fall. Pleats are released, so we're looking good. I do feel like maybe the panic is not necessary and I do not need to freak out about my sleeves. We're gonna see in just a second. I looked quickly and I was like, oh, that, that's not as bad as I thought, so yay. <laughs> uh, let me put my hair up and then we'll go look at the mirror. Okay, so here we are, here's the front view. I do love the pink skirt. I will wear another petticoat under this, just FYI. I do need to figure out the hem because it is wild right now. But the front version of this looks great. Let me put this arm down and have a look. Yeah, this is a good spot. It's covering my straps. The front looks good. The like minor bosom that I get out of this is great. Looking good. Okay, so let's look at the back. Okay, what do we think? I don't hate it. I think it's fine. It is going down believe, below my my rumpus butt crack. <laughs> um, I'm not 
as horrified by it as I was before, so that's excellent. I'm like, can you guys even really see this? It's a lot of similar stuff. It is still too high, like I would definitely like this slope to be a little bit more gentle and not so severe. And for next time, I do think, like I will adjust the pattern, but I think for this gown, it's not as bad as I was thinking. Like it does go through below, below here's the bottom of it. <laughs> Just for, for comparison, my butt is like way down here. <laughs> so this is still like, this is my lower back. Like this isn't even at my coccyx bone. <laughs> But I think it actually looks fine in this dress for right now. I think the next gown I make, like the next version of this, will definitely have this be more sloped and longer. But I think for right now it's fine and like for the purposes of pattern test it's okay. Like what does it look from the side? Is that okay? I think so. Okay, I have extended the mock-up straps just a little bit, but this is not very well pinned on. It's also not tucked down or folded in or any of the other things that need to happen with a mock-up but let me show you the back you can see I added about I don't know it's like a little bit more than a half an inch by by moving the straps down although the straps are actually already more down than they are in here on my dress because I hand sewed them on so we're gonna have to look at that okay so it is I mean you lose a half an inch or so because of the tuck under right but it is lower I'll give it that so maybe I will adjust the straps and the back is definitely lower also so mm, okay I think I'm gonna mess with the straps eh, I don't love it but I'm gonna do it <laughs> it's always how it is I don't love it but I'm gonna do it all right we are back in the gown still looking good in the front which is good I don't know what's going on here so maybe this needs a little something uh, pulling down is probably the thing that needs to happen. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we got this together. That's good. Okay, I think that looks much better. It's like the back line, like this, the skirt attachment line is here instead of like way up here. So that's good. And the um, point comes down a little bit farther, which is good. It's still not perfect. I still would like to make it longer for next time, but I do think it's better in this way. I did have to adjust, like, the straps are very short on the inside edge and still kind of long on the outside edge because otherwise that thing that always happens to me where, like, bubbles happened, so I had to fix that. But I think overall I'm more pleased with a gown like this, so I'm going to go ahead and sew these straps down. Um, I only really adjusted them in the back. I could have taken out the front and adjusted them also, but I, I didn't really want to do that. So, this is where we're And I, I'm happy with a gown like this, so it's fine. Um, next time I will definitely make them slightly longer, probably um, push that down another inch or two, so that it'll look even more high to fashion-y, but that's in silk, so we're good here. All right, welcome back to the program, Brunhilde, my mannequin. She clearly needs some work. Uh, I don't really understand how this all works. Because her waist size is like two inches smaller than mine, and yet this thing fits better on me than it does on her. It can't even close. My bust size is smaller, but honestly, I get an inch overlap at least on each side from this, and she she barely makes it together. So, I don't know. Her straps are also totally different. Her waist is clearly way higher than mine, because her waist is like up here, and mine is down here. I don't think I'm long-waisted either, so I'm very confused by this. However, the butt looks significantly better on her because of it <laughs> um so you know props to Brunhilde for that that part so anyway uh the point of Brunhilde right now is to deal with the hem so I'm not really sure what I want to do with the hem yet I'm debating on whether or not I want the train or a train I might leave it dragging on the floor just a little bit in the back and then probably right at the floor on the sides however I would have to have Oh, shoes on for that, so that's also a different scenario, um, which shoes could vary wildly on what I want to wear, so that's frustrating. Um, but I do want to uh, even out the hem here, because it is significantly long here in the front, and that, that shouldn't be the case, for sure. So we are the same size, which is great, the same height, so I can sit here and figure out the hem, figure out what I want to do with that, and then go ahead and put the hem in. Okay, so I have it basically hitting the floor right here. 
and then it slowly tapers out to just being a little bit on the floor back here so like a tiny train and how I'm gonna handle this is I'm actually gonna pick this dress up I've only done like half of this and I'm gonna pick this dress up and I'm gonna press it along this whatever this line is that I've made so it's kind of even like even it out and then press fold it over in half and press the other side exactly the same put it back on here and just make sure it looks good and then I'm gonna cut the fabric not at the the floor but slightly above it on the inside and then bring it down so that the hem is right exactly on that floor line so that press line will be the hem line hopefully that's gonna work out <laughs> it's my my hack for how I'm gonna do this particular dress I do every freaking hem differently so I don't know why I'm like this guys I'm just chaos agent but we'll see how this works looking at this I think it's great it's like a very evenly tapered and it tapers like exactly to the back center which is right here so I feel good about that I'm gonna go ahead and press this and maybe uh, make the other side evenly uh, fold it up and then press that and just put it back on my mannequin just to see if it looks good okay it's very uh, hard to show you this but they are in fact pretty even all the way around I did measurements from the waist measurement down to the floor because that was easier have a little bit of a, a train in the back there see it on the floor and then it comes back up I like it to pop it on me without my corset and stuff on just to check it out and see how it looks and then if it's good I'm gonna cut it off and hem it there's a little serotonin for everyone Okay, a little double rolled hem all the way down and I'm going to run this through the sewing machine because I can. Okay, my desperate attempt to not do sleeves just yet, but I'm going to do them in just a minute. <laughs> I'm going to look at my butt here. Let me just show you what the deal is with the butt. Okay, so my issue is it comes out and is like super flat again and like sometimes it like exceeds the width of my hips <laughs> so I do need it to be bummy but I also need this section to be just like a little bit less wide here so I think what I'm going to do is run like a line or two of stitches essentially to quilt down this edge and hopefully make it just a little bit more like puffy back here but less on the sides we're going to see if that works in case you wanted to see that in actual butt I'm gonna just like essentially squish this down and sew a line in here having some some stuffing inside of it to keep it a little bit thick but not so that it's like super puffed on the edges hopefully this works so I have a couple going here so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put this on put this card over it and just see how it looks this side compared to that side it is better it's like not sticking out on the side so much so I'll give it that than like this one which sticks out farther on the sides um, some of it is definitely like how you set this thing I will say though that it like still sticks out a little bit because it's flat right there and it sticks out so I might give it one more just to like help it curve over a little bit so we'll see about that I'm gonna try that okay I love it I think it looks great like that this side looks a lot less or like a lot more rumpy like yes there's my butt and it like fades off to the side then say this side where you can definitely see like the crack right here where it stops so um and like you can kind of cover that up but it's a lot less I'm gonna do this side and then I think my butt will be in good shape this tells you like when you make something just fix it if you don't like it just literally it doesn't matter what it looks like under there like it, it kind of is a mess right now but it looks good under the skirt so don't worry about what it looks like if, it, if nobody's ever gonna see it okay I can no longer see them out the sides when I look straight on so that's good they look very rumpy I feel good about this 
and I would like to call this little improvement Dunzo. In the event that any of you wanted to see what this looks like now, it's just like literally quilted down on the edges on both sides. It's a little messy. I don't mind. It's hard to hard to quilt with this much wool inside, so I'm not very fussed by it. I'm kind of like trying to reach the wool up though, so like I get a higher rump. But anyway, it's looking good. And honestly, even if I took my skirt off, this is what it looks like anyway. So you can't even see anything. Even if it did look awful, it doesn't look awful. But yeah. All right. Well, looks like I can't avoid doing sleeves anymore. So I am going to go ahead and start that process. And I will walk you through what I do to try to keep myself sane. Most of which is just hand sew them. <laughs> Base them on, check that everything's cool, and then hand sew them. Alright, this is going to be fun to show you single-handedly, but um, the first thing I do is just put it on my dress form. It doesn't need to be pinned or anything. I just want to be able to tell the left sleeve from the right sleeve. <laughs> then I get one of my sleeves and I turn it right side out. And I figure out where the elbow is, which is back there. And I figure out which way the elbow forms so coming this way and then I hang it up and I see does the elbow look right here yes it does let's see if the elbow looks right on the other side no no it does not so we know that that is this sleeve this is the right sleeve uh this this is the slide this is the right side of the dress it's my left but it's the right side of the dress this is the right sleeve so the first thing I'm going to do is walk over here and I'm going to set this down and I'm going to take my Frixion pen and I'm going to put a big R in it. And if I'm smart, what I'm actually going to do is go over to the dress and put an R on that. <laughs> because when it's not on you, things get confusing. And I put an O on this one. Cool. Now we know which sleeve goes on which one. The second thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just draw on a 5 8 inch seam allowance around all the way around this. Because then I can sew on it. I will also draw one on here because it helps me match up where it goes. Super simple things that help a lot. It doesn't have to be exactly precise, like this is your seam allowance on your sleeves, it'll be fine. And literally just ooch your way around your sleeves until you feel good and you get something weird, just make up the difference, it's gonna be fine. There we go. This is all ironable, so it's fine. I stay on the edge of this guy, not on this guy, to make sure. Ooh, and I try to keep the long end of this 5 8 available so I have more to draw with. I love this seam gauge. You can get them. Actually, I have them in my Amazon store linked down below if you guys want one. Morgan suggested this to me one day. It was the best purchase I've made in a long time. So I just do that. You can do this any way you want. I draw it on. The next thing I do is they tell you to put the pleats, because there's two or three little pleats in here between these two dots, so I just mark them on the pattern so I can see them as I go. And they are marked right here for me. Um, and if you really want to, you can write pleat, because like it's all ironable, so don't worry about this. It's also on the inside, don't worry about it. So this is where I'm going to take it and I'm going to go ahead and pin it into the sleeve hole and then I'm going to lightly baste it all the way around so that I can try it on. And this allows me to move it around if I have to, adjust some things, stuff like that. Okay, so I got this guy on. It looks pretty good. It will be a little bit different because it doesn't get pinned in here. Like you don't lose the part of the strap because it gets slid between the strap and the lining. So really I should be pinning it in there so you could see what it actually looks like. But before I even worry about that, <laughs> I put this on and I was like, this sleeve is massive. Like, it's way too big for me. 
So I think I'm going to go to the effort of making the sleeve smaller, possibly iteratively so that I can make sure I don't get it too small because I cannot afford to make another sleeve or let alone two. So I'm going to go ahead and take them in a quarter of an inch on each side and just see how that does. But it is really big. I unfortunately have to pick out all my work on the cuff to make that happen too. That's a bummer. Here is how I do this thing where I'm trying to make things smaller, but I'm kind of nervous that I'm going to mess it up. I actually just add another line in, but leave this one in until I try it on to make sure it looks fine. <laughs> and for this one, I was actually fine up here, but needed it to be a little bit less here, so I just tapered it in. So these, it does fit. I tested this on here, but I am going to flip it all the way inside out and check it one more time. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this off and trim it down. Also marking and doing the other side before I do that. I look down at the end here. You can see there's no thread here. This was my thread check-in. Like that's how much I had left on that, that particular spool so awesome because that's all I ever need to do by machine I think okay so we have these back now more properly sized for my arm which is great I briefly have the problem that my sleeves are too big but they were so they are now smaller I'm gonna go ahead and pin them back into my dress and just make sure everything looks good I first pin them in have a flip back out so I can make sure they look vaguely right and then I go ahead and have a baste of them just like tack them in very quickly and then try them on and make sure that they're all good <laughs> and then I will go ahead and send them in so yes there's a lot of steps to this but it makes it so I only put in sleeves once and it's the only way I've ever found to actually make sure I put sleeves in only once. <laughs> machine sewing especially um, this machine here doesn't have like an, um, uh, an arm so you have to do it the upside down way and I I hate it like, I hate it. And I don't love hand sewing either, but I hate that. <laughs> it just makes me so stressed out. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're going to go ahead and hand sew. So I'm going to go ahead and baste in and see how it goes, and I'll show you when we get to the try-on. Okay, we are not yet even basted, but we are pinned, and that took about an hour. Um, why did it take an hour? Uh, largely, I was just looking at things. There is a notch that's on this piece that I thought lined up with a notch on on the sleeve here. And it just wasn't working properly any time. Like, it was okay, but I'm pretty sure that this seam right here is supposed to line up with this corner. And there were two notches for me to choose from, and if I chose one, this was slightly rotated a little bit. Um backwards is that right no it was it was it was rotated forward so the sleeves were more like that um and I was like nope that's not right <laughs> so I put it back in and I rotated them back and this looks much better and it does look like the lines on the drawing match up here the front line here is a weird one because it is underneath your arm but it does give the impression that this guy should be down here which I just like really get confused when lining these guys up so and when I when I did this before this guy was like way down here um, I think largely because of the pleats happening so it sucks up some of the space anyway I, I tried it on it feels good so I'm gonna baste it on and I'm gonna baste it it's it's a 5 8 inch seam allowance but I'm gonna baste it a half an inch just to see if giving myself a little bit extra room is good um, and if I need more, it's easy when I do the final sew to just do it at 5 eighths. And if it's great, I'll just do it at uh, half an inch. Again, this part of the sleeve is tucked in between the lining and the, the top of the shoulder strap here. So that's the situation. So I'm going to go ahead and baste this in. Then I'm going to go have dinner with my friend Nami, who happens to be in town. And then I'm going to come back and try it on with my stays and see how it looks. If it looks horrible at the basting stage, I can rip it all out and start over again. Okay, so pardon my pajama pants, but here we are. We're tucked in. Everything's on. Sleeves are basted on. 
they are looking good. I have good range of motion, nothing's yanking when I do that, which is nice. Um, I can like touch the sky, I can probably touch my toes. <laughs> Secure all the way around both sleeves with a back stitch and call this good. Um, it says I have finishing work to do. I could do the insides of the sleeves if I want to, I'm just gonna leave them <sighs> probably loose for a wear or two and just see. Um, I also have little spots like this that I actually like to just go ahead and tack down really quick so that this doesn't like become apparent. There's no real need for that, like it shouldn't, but you know, just just because I'm me, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But that's a very small thing, otherwise I think I'm pretty much done, which is very exciting. Um, considering making a tucker for the inside of this and my sleeves, um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, and I'm also pondering hats to wear for, like, a quick photo shoot, so I'll get back to you with all that. Already she has some sleeves installed. I was just looking at, like, how nicely this one particular matchup happened. <laughs> they certainly didn't all happen like that. Okay, I did these, and I did all this stuff while I was there in the bed sewing. I also get to cross off this guy. Um, these two have sort of changed. So this is like the final for the purposes of the, the sew along. I'm going to make another one of these very shortly. So these dates are kind of off. But I do have to do this picture situation by the 21st. And I will be doing it in this brown gown. Um, my friend Erica is going to help me. So that's exciting. I was thinking that I have the perfect hat to go with this dress downstairs. It needs a little bit of like zhishing, like some flowers or something added to it. So I was going to go downstairs and find that probably tomorrow and maybe decorate a little bit of a hat to go with this dress. And then but hopefully it's not raining tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. Actually kind of hoping it is raining because I live in California and we need the rain. So I'm going to hope for the rain, in which case I will just try this dress on in here for you. But I will try the dress on fully for you with like, you know, two petticoats <laughs> instead of one. You can see it with the sleeves on and the hat and all that. Although I don't really have it in me to do a hedgehog for you or whatever, but we'll make cute hair happen. So I am back to talk about what I thought about this pattern. Uh, I found it to be like pretty good. Like out the out the gate, that thing fit really well for especially for someone of my size. Like it to have a like a plus size part of the pattern fit so well was really lovely. Almost everything that I got hung up on was kind of either my fault or there was like some tiny note somewhere that would have made me know. Um, that I I had needed this information and I missed it uh, or the only thing that really hung me up for a long time was that the lines on the pattern are not the same lines that you cut for the skirt as for the bodice and and I I don't know if I have an opinion on this on my pattern company <laughs> it just hung me up so if you're gonna make this that's the thing you should know I am hopeful that they will make it more apparent to you. Like, I am a person who opens the pattern and, like, figures out what size I am and then just starts cutting, and that was my problem, and I'm pretty sure half of people who cut patterns do that. So that's a thing that people probably should be aware of. Like, no, you're going to get to this, this part of the pattern that you need to cut out just while it's in paper format, and it's going to be a little um, different, and it's going to have different lines than the lines that you're cutting for your bodice. So that was the only part of the pattern that like really choked me pretty hard. Everything else was, was stuff that I either kind of needed more information on or like needed to look at a picture for or whatever and I think that would have happened no matter what. Like there's nothing about this pattern that's wrong or anything like that. So it's a, it, it was a, it's a beautiful dress. It's a beautiful fit. Like it fits me like a glove. I love it. I cannot wait to make it in silk. I'm very excited about that. So yeah, I I do endorse this pattern. <laughs> it was great. I am kind of excited at how fast I could get it made. Like I was even kind of slow. I took a day off because I you you could see I have a heat patch on me right now. I cracked my neck earlier this week really bad and like just basically had to like abandon ship on sewing for 
like one and a half nights and I'm still like I can't turn my my neck all the way in one direction still I mean it's getting better every day but you, everybody has these so we all know what that is uh, I think you can make this dress in significantly less time if you machine sewed more than I did and I do think this dress could take you longer if you wanted to hand sew more than I did I feel like I did the amount I want to do I'll probably hand sew a lot more of it when I do the silk version I'm not sure what order I'm going to do that anymore. I think next up is going to be a bonnet test for me for sure. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, I just also wanted to tell you guys I have a new little member of the family to show you. This beauty has come in. This is the new and improved patterns of fashion with the like more pages and it's color now. And um, obviously we're talking about like my era's. So I'm very excited to get this this girl in. I I have never actually made anything from patterns of fashion. I think my issue largely is that I don't grade patterns and it, you you have to not only size up the pattern but you also have to be able to grade it to your size, which is not something that I do very often because I use patterns normally, but there are some things in here that might very well tempt me into that so we shall see okay well I'm gonna hit the hay and take some Advil and like try to sleep off a little bit more of this pinch nerve and then I will come back tomorrow and we will see if we can zhuzh up a hat and make a cute little hat to go with this guy I'm still considering whether or not I want a tucker for her part of me does and part of me is also like it might be a little cutesy on that dress like I think it looks really good without it I don't know. I don't know. And uh, tuckers are things you can like pull in and out. They're the ruffles that go, if you don't know what a tucker is, it's a ruffle that goes around your neckline and you put it onto some sort of like ribbon or whatever and then you can whip it in and out of a dress and you can also do it on the cuffs of the sleeves. For now I think I'm going to leave it plain if I want to at a given event I might add one but I think she, she looks pretty good as is so I'll worry about the hat tomorrow and then We'll do a little final try on and we'll wrap up this video. I've been trying on this hat so many times I have now have frizzy hair. Okay, so we're gonna make a hat. I have a hat form that I got a long time ago on, I think, eBay. And some flowers I got yesterday at Michael's and some ribbon. So let's try to whip together a cute hat to wear with this guy. Um, I have this, which is essentially just a berger. Berger, Ber French people, feel free to yell at me. Um, and it, it has been sort of bent. I, I unbent it a little bit because it was even more severely bent. And <laughs> I talked to Lynn about it. She hates it. She's like, unbend that. She said it in the most nice Lynn way possible. But she was definitely like, yeah, unbend that. I unbent it a little bit. I do like the bend. I want to stuff some flowers in here and maybe put a ribbon around it. And she thinks a ribbon gets like sliced through right here and on the other side and goes down so that you can tie it onto your head. So I'm going to attempt that as well. So yeah, let's uh, see if we can get a little hat made here. I made a cute hat. Here's the hat. It is cute. I'm excited about it, although it does very much shade me from the sun, but like no picture with this on is gonna be good unless like I have some sort of like bounce light also happening, so noted for when I need to take pictures of this. Um yeah, so I'm gonna go put on my stays and put on my dress and put on my hat and you can see the whole situation together.
Okay, well, here is the dress with the hat. Is the hat ever in focus? Like, maybe? There we go. But that is she done. I'm very pleased with it. If it's great, it's comfortable, I feel like I can do stuff in it. Um, as always, my shoulder strap is like a part that feels weird on me but honestly i think it it's really more that it like feels weird on me rather than it is it's not insecure in any way <laughs> i just think i'm not used to having a strap there okay so i think that is it for this video i'm very excited about the fact that this dress is done and i can get moving on to the next thing and the pattern test is done so that's exciting i'm gonna do hopefully a photo shoot next week with erica so that i have images to send over to Scroop, but other than that, I think I'm good. I like the pattern. It's good. Needs a little bit of adjusting, but I mean, all patterns need adjusting, so whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm very pleased with it. Anyway, if you like this video or this set of videos, give it a thumbs up for me. Leave me comments down below. As always, I would love to know what you guys are working on. I love reading those comments. I'm finally getting back into the swing of responding to comments after taking a couple months off from doing that um, and you'll probably see me responding to old comments now because that's I'm kind of going through a little bit at a time trying to get them all sorted. It was a hard road last year but I'm glad that I'm feeling more like my old bony self again. Um, okay so bonnet next and I will see you guys next week with another video. Bye guys!